All right, guys, so in this video, we're gonna talk about this thing called effect size. And this is really, you really have to have somewhat of an understanding of this, especially when it comes to the drug ads and how they may they may ask this. And I haven't really covered it in any previous videos, so hopefully this will be helpful for you. This question says, using medications treating PTSD in war veterans would have an expected effect size reflective of which the following values? Is it A, 0.2, B, 0.5, C, 0.8, or D greater than 0.9. So here's where we, where we really got to start off on this. And, and just for the sake, effect size, you're going to say it's going to be basically between zero and one, okay? Between zero and one. Zero meaning nothing, and one meaning, oh my gosh, this works great, okay? So because in, in statistics, we have this problem with the word, I don't really have a problem with it, but it's, it's significance, right? Because in the real world, significance, the word means, oh, it must have a great impact. But in research, it, it kind of means something a little different. And, and really where I'm going with this is because you can have studies where they do uh, p-value, you got this confident, confidence interval, there's our effect size, and then you got the number needed to treat, number needed to harm. So essentially, you know, why they're, why they're testing you on this is that when you read research articles and you're trying to determine whether this medication or the study or to implement this strategy in practice is, that, is something that you should actually do and that it would have an actual impact on you. So, because look at this, when you do p-value, what's our standard p-value, right? P-value, we like it to be less than 0.05. Now, what is that saying? That is essentially saying that it is less than 5% likely that the result occurred by chance, right? So we want this small. We want it 0 0.05, and that's just kind of a standard set number, or less. And again, it says that chances are that that very, very, very small percent that likely that that result happened by chance. So we want that, we want that really small. But just because something has a p-value of 0 0.05 or smaller doesn't mean it's really going to have a, a, a significance in your practice. That's where effect size comes in. Now, before we get there, we got confidence interval, right? Now, confidence interval is usually, you know, typically would say like this 95% threshold, meaning 95% chance it's going to fall within this certain range. And, you know, you see confidence interval written like, you know, 1.2 to 2.3 or something like that, right? Now, I've always taught that I don't like, I don't want my confidence interval to cross, uh, uh, basically to cross one, right? I don't like that because what's that saying? It means, it means there's no difference between the placebo and the treatment. There was no difference at some point, so I don't like that. Anyways, uh, so the confidence interval, you know, usually reflective of this and usually within this 95% uh, threshold. And how would I get a tighter, a narrower, okay, like uh, 1.4 to 1.7? How can I get like a narrower uh, confidence interval where, there's a, where the confidence that my result will fall within that range 95% of the time, you know, classically? I would have to do what? I would want to increase power, okay? So when in doubt and they say, how do I improve my study? I want you to say, look for the answer choice that increases the power, increases the uh, number of people in the study, you know? And then uh, we have the effect size. Because the effect size, and where I'm going with this, is because significance doesn't necessarily mean relevance. And it goes back to how you're gonna implement this in uh, practice. Because like this, if you did a, a, a test and you know, the gold standard, the gold standard of the test said that there was a change in 10 out of, let's just say 500 people. Okay, that's the gold standard about there, what's out there right now. And then you made this new, uh, the new test, or the new drug, improved 15 out of 500. Now you might say, well, okay, well that met all this criteria, point, you know, 0 0.05 or left, confidence interval was pretty tight on the, the test, but when you look at this, is that really like impactful where you're like, oh my gosh, where has this been all my life? No, you may have increased it by, you know, 50% going, you got 10 out of 500. Now you got 15 out of 100. So yes, better, but is it going to be one of those impactful changes where you're, gonna, you're just going to go, you know, let's do it now. Let's do it now. Probably not. So the effect size is how powerful 
a result is in practice. Okay, it's how powerful it is. So if the effect size is zero, okay, because like I said, it's between zero and one is where you're going to measure the effect size. That's essentially saying that the, the treatment group uh, was the same as, say, the, the, placebo, the placebo. There's not much difference at all. There's no difference at all if it was zero, okay? So the effect size of something, when it's zero, is not much, okay? Now, if it's at one, or let's just say 0.9 or greater, then it's a significant uh, effect size. And now an example of that would be something like using stimulants for ADHD, right? Adderall, Ritalin, Umethylphenidate, um, you know, you name it. They work, right? They just flat out work. So the effect size for a stimulant is going to be something around 0.9 up, up there. Now, using benzodiazepines for a panic disorder, well, it's going to work. Yeah, it's, it's going to have an effect. It, so you would implement that because it will have an effect for that diagnosis using that medication. So it's going to have a relatively high effect size. Something around 0.5 is going to be like your SSRIs, right? You know, the data out there is like, well, they, they, they work in this many, this amount of people. They don't work sometimes. So they do have an effect, not as good as how stimulants work on ADHD or benzodiazepines work on panic disorder, but SSRIs do have an effect. Uh, but it's but it's right around 0.5 when it comes to the effect size. Something that's going to be 0.2, around 0.2 in that range, is going to be treating medications like with PTSD, right? The research is kind of, uh, you know, it's there, but there's not a lot of data to support that medications are going to have an impact it, with that condition. So the correct answer is using medications for PTSD would have an effect size relatively on the lower side, okay? And you can kind of see that the medications, again, the S stimulants very high, benzos right here. But the take home point from this video, guys, is I haven't covered effect size very much. You may see it in drug ads, but it's very important because that, that helps you understand a study because you just can't go on p-value and confidence interval alone. And then again, you, get, you need to incorporate number needed to treat, number needed to harm. Again, how many people do I need to treat to have, uh, just, you know, see an impact or see a result in, in one person. And you want that number to be a uh, number needed to treat uh, to be a relatively low number, you know, low single digits, obviously. So anyways, guys, effect size between zero and one, closer to one has a greater impact. And just be familiar with that for your exam. Hope it was helpful, guys. Mm -hmm.